With the hot weather, the water is really heating up and this means the fish are going to go deep. Our guides are standing by with all the information that you'll need to adjust your fishing plans. This week we're talking about deep dropping here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Well, hello everyone and welcome back for another week of Summertime Fishing Reports. We're in our last week of June with the best holiday coming up this weekend, in my humble opinion, 4th of July. We're going to get you out there for some good old American fun, but Rick, I know we've got some deep dropping duties to get to today. Absolutely. And you know what, Bree? Yes. Your humble opinion means mm -hmm. that it's actually 4th of July. It is your birthday. It is. And not only were you pretty, but you're born on the Independence Day, which makes you doubly special. Oh, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, before we get to our first guide, let's say hi to Dave Farrell at the workbench. Who has a guest with him over there today. Who we yes. got, Dave? We've got Ray Rocher. He's going to tell us a lot about the deep drop, and he does it a lot mm -hmm. on his charter boat. So he's going to tell us a little bit about how he does it. Stealing money again, Dave. Look at you. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> All right, well, this 4th of July weekend is looking pretty good in the lower coast region, so let's get our captain to kick off the celebration. Bottoms up, Chad. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a good long weekend in Forest Land on Monday, so guys are going to be able to get out there. I'm sure they'll be traveling lower coast, middle coast, all over. But if you're coming down to Port Mansfield, um, you definitely can stop by and see me. we got the marina here, and we're going to talk about some deep dropping, which I really love to do this stuff. So on the deep dropping, I've been deep dropping for decades out of here at Port Mansfield. Um, it's been, I've learned a lot through the years just from just targeting stuff from grouper to snapper, uh, down to towel fish you know, and swordfish. But talking about grouper and the snapper <clears throat> and looking for those, when we're talking about deep dropping. Everybody have a dish, different version of it, but basically on that, I'm looking at like 200 on a shallow end up to about 450 feet or better for the grouper and snapper. Uh, definitely look for structure on the bottom. Use your garment unit for that. That really helps you out. Actually can help you spot where the fish are out there on the back side of it or on the front. And the key thing in this is, you know, <clears throat> try to do the best you can as far as predicting some good weather and currents. You really don't know the currents until you really get out there quite a bit, but the currents and of course bait is everything and have some really good tackle. If you're targeting that, the red snapper, that r, r tackle makes a great deep drop rig, especially for tile fish and the snapper. I've got that stuff on the boat all the time. If you're going to bigger stuff, then we just use a bigger eagle claw hook and make a different rig for the, uh, for the grouper. But, you know, sometimes everything doesn't align right uh, perfectly out there. Um, so what you need basically is you need to be able to, if you're going to be drifting, you got to get a decent slow drift uh, to present that bigger jig or the bigger bait on the bottom. Um, if you have the current going against the seas, which is pretty rare, but if your seas are coming in and the seas are going against it, for some reason I found over the years, this really turns a bigger grouper bite on. I think they're like the big bass, they're lazy, they're waiting for there, and they're going to eat a lot, lot heavier when that happens. So get some big, bigger spinning tackle like the 10 8500 series. Uh, fill that up with some diamond braid, 60 to 80 pound on it, or works that for your jigging. And when you're going to just bounce it off the bottom, the first five or 10 feet, that's what you want to do that for the grouper. Or the snapper will also hit that also. When you're looking for the bigger Warsaw, then definitely go to like a 50 or 80 wide pin international. Load that sucker up with at least 100, 200 uh, diamond braid and put a bigger bait on it like a bonita or a you know, live hardtail, whatever you have available where you'll be fishing out of. And on those bigger grouper, you make sure you got to let them eat a little bit, let them run a little bit before you set that hook. And when you get them up there, you have to just crank on them and crank on them and crank on them. So I got a picture coming up here. It's a throwback picture a little bit. It's about my daughter and myself. We landed it on a 50 wide international. She was 13 and that grouper was way over 200 pounds. We actually landed that thing two and a half miles from where we caught it. Oh my wow. gosh, Chad, that's so an awesome it picture. Was, it was nuts. So moving to inshore, I wish I could still talk about the deep drop in this great, but inshore, we're having some really good inshore action. Been really good on the lower coast uh, from South Padre out to Three Islands north all the way up to the east cut along that two to three foot of water there's been lots of redfish i've been driving around here in my shallow sport just looking and also fishing so redfish like i said they've been holding those areas i mentioned a key thing is to have a good boat run up there like a shallow sport any shallow sport model from their 18s up to the x3 which are run works perfect on that now the fish are up shallower early up on that sand and they're going to drop off as the day goes on uh, gold spoons are really working well if you're up shallow early and if you're wade fishing or even, you know, drifting off the boat, the mirror lure top dog junior works really good earlier in the AM. And then the saltwater sass and paddle tails, when they start dropping out from the sand into the spotted bottom, like the grass, then I'll put the, the paddle tails on there and just kind of work them pretty quick. Definitely the key is look for wakes pushing up early. We've got some calmer weather going, so look for wakes and some mullet movement. And we've actually seen a few big schools of fish 
you know, several thousand in school, which is kind of rare. Normally those don't show up until August or September, but we've been popping a few of those around the pipeline of Fort Mansfield. So I got a picture here of a redfish. We were actually on my skiff. You can see in the back here that picture there, it's a 105 Yamaha, but it's actually a jet drive. So that's a 150 with 104, 105 out the back end on the jet. We were running super shallow and we released that oversized red there. Nice. So moving over to the offshore fishing. Offshore fishing has been really, really good. The state water and federal water uh, snapper has been really on. So there's good numbers and there's good numbers of plats. You know, deep guys are catching some good sails, a few whites and some blues in that 300 to 600 feet deep. Uh, like I said, on the snapper fishing, it's been really good, especially with the better water quality out there. We've got some really good visibility. So this helps you with the jigging even. So get some eagle claw trocar jigs, attach the fish bites with that and hit some of those suspended fish. If you guys are dropping deeper, um, then try some bigger uh, live bait maybe in the bottom of the structure as we talked about in the deep dropping section there. And then remember on the snapper fishing is 16 inches and you're allowed two per person in federal waters. After you get your two, if you want to come back in the state, well, you can pick one there two for the total of four in aggregate and that's 15 inches in the state there. So take advantage of the federal season while it's open. Or if you're trolling and stuff, go ahead and you know catch some snapper on the way home. So going to Pelagics, there are uh, some really good numbers I'm seeing. So it's going to be looking really good for some tournaments coming up. Uh, there's been some good fish in that 300 to 500 foot of water. There's been some rips out there. We're getting some sorgasm, which is good. Uh, definitely put some uh, Islander baits out there rigged with ballyhoos. Works, works really excellent. You can put some teasers out you know, on your flats right there on your riggers right, right in front and have a pitch bait ready in case you get a big bill that comes up in your spread. Whether you have a pitch bait mackerel or a ballyhoo, depends if it's a blue or a sail comes up, you know, pick your bait that you want to toss out there to them. Uh, keep an eye out for, of course, bait and your current changes or your weed lines. Definitely, if you find that stuff in your Garmin and you got bait balls underneath there, don't leave the bait. Hit, you know, stand top of them. Keep working that area, and you'll produce a lot better. And then, hopefully, I'll see you guys at the marina this weekend. We got, you know, good food, drinks, and fuel on the water, and we'll be ready to go. Everybody, have a good fourth. All right, bud. Thank you so much. We're gonna go take a look at the shallow sport boats, hot spots from the lower coast region. He says, in shore, the redfish action has really picked up on the lower coast of the flats from the three islands up to the east land cut in Port Mansfield. Along the breaks also from the sand to the spotted grass on the bottom is what to look for. And then offshore, action has been good on sailfish in and around 500 feet of water from the canyons out of South Padre to the northeast of Port Mansfield. Well, Rick, depending on where you're fishing, everyone's definition of deep drop is all relative. So let's see how Matt Losher in the Star Charm Middle Fresh region does it, shall we? Yes. Go for it, Matt. All right, Bree. Yeah, you know, deep dropping in here in the Middle Fresh region, it's just not the same as the normal sense of the term. Here, deep water is more like 30 foot, not 300. But since we're on the deep topic this week, I wanted to discuss deeper water fishing tactics in the freshwater sense. Not so much tactics, but just how to really narrow it down. Uh, you know, in the middle fresh region, you will rarely ever find game fish hanging out deeper than about 30 feet this time of the year. There is a period of time, usually for about a month or two during the dead of winter, when you might find them hanging out a little deeper than that for a couple of reasons, but we're not gonna get into all that right now because it's just not applicable to the time of year. But during this heat of the summer period that we're getting into now, 30 foot is usually about the max. The water just has very little oxygen past that because what's called the thermocline. That thermocline is generally gonna set up around 20 to 30 foot. It varies a little bit from lake to lake. And you just won't have game fish living deeper than that because there's not enough oxygen past that for them to survive. So that zero to the thermocline depth is gonna be your productive section of the water column. So it really helps you narrow it down a lot this time of the year. You can utilize your Garmin electronics to easily determine where that thermocline is on your local lake this summer and focus on you know that level or above by looking for kind of a thin line of debris on your sonar as you idle around is what that thermocline is going to look like. Now one thing to keep in mind for deep water fishing is just because the deep the fish may not go deeper than the thermocline does not mean they won't suspend over deeper water or hang on a break line next to some deeper water during that time. So it is still possible to have your boat floating over say 50 foot of water, for example, and catching bass that are suspended around bait fish schools or in the timber, say 20 foot down. So you can't completely eliminate those deeper areas. However, you can narrow down what section of the water column to target. So just remember those things when you're looking for where to narrow down what section of the water column to fish this summer. Now, moving into how we're gonna be catching bass here lately, uh, in the middle fresh region, starting with the largemouth. 
Uh, I'm going to bring you a report from OH Ivy this week. The Hill Country Hammer Guys Service crew, they fished up there this week, and it did not disappoint. Jared told me that the water temp up there is in the upper 80 degree range now, and they had a blast catching them a few different ways last week. He said that early and late, they caught some fish on topwater bait. Then during the day, Carolina rigs in about 15 to 25 foot of water were the most productive. They also used their Garmin live scopes to target some big fish with a swim bait in about 25 foot of water. And he sent me some photos to showcase what they caught there. You've got Jared's brother, Mr. Justin Poole, and John Collins with some beautiful OHIV bass there. Congrats on some awesome fish, guys. Looks like a lot of fun. I'm kind of jealous. Those are huge. Now, moving up to uh, I'm way past Chambers. Kinda. Things have changed up a bit this week. Mr. Thurman Selman informed me that the lake level is coming down again. They're not pumping in the water like they were last week. He says well, the water's about three foot low and clear right now. Most folks are fishing early and late to avoid the heat and some overnight. 11-inch uh, bass assassin worms have been really the go-to even at night around the lighted dock. Now, last but not least, at Sam Rayburn, the big fish are continually showing up. Anglers really showed out this past weekend with some big fish during the Skeeter Bass Champs event and the Rusty Team Tournament event last weekend. In the Rusty Team event, which was a three-fish tournament, Garrett Gardaran and Luke Wolf weighed in 17.65 pounds. So congrats on that win, guys. Some good fish there. And then also I want to say congrats to my good buddy Brett Pruitt and his partner Ben South for winning that Skeeter Bass Champs event. They had a huge bag of 31 and a half pounds. Wow. Now, William Florney and James Chumley also had a 30 pound bag, or a 31 pound bag, rather, just missing the win, but they did get big fish honors with a 10 pounder. So, heck of a job there as well. Tons of big fish coming out of Rayburn right now. And I'm hearing that a lot of these bigger fish are being caught deep cranking with big plugs, and then some are also being caught on big worms and Carolina rigs. So, get out there and fish that deep water. Now, uh, I'm running short on time. But I did want to mention that the white bass, the hybrids, and the crappie have all bit well this week on a lot of the lakes. So I'm going to bring you a lot more info on those this week, or uh, next week, rather. So good luck out there. Stay safe in that heat, and good luck. All right, bud. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine System hotspot from the Middle Fresh region. Matt says that we're going to go bass fishing. The largemouth bass are best early and late on topwater baits and midday on Carolina rigs. And don't forget those big worms as well. All right, we're busting out the fireworks in the Garmin Middle Coast region next. But first, Dave and Ray are busting out some deep drop tips for rigs and techniques at the workbench. Gentlemen, he's you're gonna, up. He's going to tell us all the secrets. Ooh. You know, all the secrets. In like 30 seconds? Yeah, we got. 37? Well, maybe 40. I'll give you 40. We'll get there. We'll get there. 40 seconds. We'll be back. <laughs> The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Bahio sunglasses. Blue light blocking. Radically clear lenses. Garmin. Plot your paradise. Fibertex. Leaders in fiberglass fabrication and repair. Sportsman's Adventures. Fishing for adventure. Berkeley. Your fish. Our science and Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats. Eat, sleep, fish. Well, we're here at the workbench, gonna do some rigs and techniques. I got Ray Rocher, he's gonna tell us a little bit about uh, deep dropping. You know, it's really fortunate for Texas, they have such great places to do it you know oh, yeah. it's 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 they enjoy such great conditions versus to a lot of places so. oh yeah here in south florida we we deal with you know three four five knots of current but you know deep dropping is just a special thing to me when i was 17 years old in 1980 i spent the summer deep dropping in key west with bill harrison who's you know a legend yeah just a mentor to me and what a great summer and it has stuck with me ever since and anytime you say deep dropping i'm in yeah, well, you know, the, the great thing about deep dropping is you get a chance to catch a lot of different things. Yep. There's not as much pressure out there. You know, the spots are a lot further yep. apart most of the time. Yep. So, you know, you're getting to fish in a lot of places where nobody has ever fished before, especially when you're getting down there, you know, past 800 feet, 1,000 feet. You know, it gets a little bit more technical, but, you know, the opportunities are huge. You can really say that with some of the mapping services like Seymour. 
Right. I'm, I'm fishing spots. Today I fished a spot I had never fished before. I was on, a way, on my way to one spot and I'm like, what's that little hiccup? And I went there and caught a snowy and a vermilion on my first drop. So, you know, the, the, there are a lot of cool things about deep dropping, like you said, not knowing what you're going to catch and pretty much all of it tastes great. What are the fishes that you're wanting to catch mostly when you're deep dropping? Well, and, and the, the things we share with Texas would be the yellow edge groupers, warsaws, snowies, uh, vermilions, bee liners. Mm -hmm. Of course, they got lots of red snapper we wish we had. Yeah. But I mean, there's just so many great fish to catch. Tile fish as well. Yeah, goldens and grays. We catch a few here. Yep. So what, what are you doing when you find one of these spots, like on a Seymour spot? What are you looking for? I mean, you first have to establish which way is the current going. I got you. So that when you drop, it takes a minute or two to get down. You got to be that far ahead of it. And basically, once you hit, I typically don't move my lead very much if I know I'm on a spot. If I'm on a good spot, I let it lay with a minimal amount of tension uh, and wait for the taps. And, you know, as was mentioned earlier, you can drop back for a second, give, let that rig lay down a little bit just for five seconds and then lock it up and hit them. Circle hooks, there's no jerking, obviously, it's just pressure. And plus, well, the, the f as far away as it is, you, yeah. you're not really going to be jerking any right. line out when you're 800 or 1,000 feet yep. down. One of the things I believe in doing is when we put the lead in the water before we drop, check your drag because you might go from deep to shallow or vice versa. You want your drag setting to be reasonable for the amount of weight. In other words, you don't want to have 25 pounds of drag and rip a fish up. Maybe you got a big fish on there and he's trying to go back to the bottom and you got too much drag and pull the hook. So believe it or not, there is an importance to drag settings. Check your drags. And also when you get to the end, if you don't have a zero stop, this you know pin hooker has a zero stop. It's wonderful, you preset it. But if your reel doesn't have that and you slam that swivel, to your tip, you might break off everything. Weight, fish, rig, light. There's a lot of a lot of gear going yeah, in the water. Not good. Well, tell them the, the, the difference between your your uh, deep drop rig and, and some of the other ones. Um, and it, a lot of it came from fishing with Bill, spinning fish off after a, we'd yeah, wind you're a talking rig up. about you know the drag and ripping them up with an electric reel because yeah. you know usually if you're cranking you can't crank them. Sometimes we get a rig up and we think, man, I thought I had more, and then a minute or two later there they float. So we designed these rigs with a swivel hook. And what that does is allows there to be another point of relief. How do you take a circle hook out? You twist it out. So the bottom line is if you have this other swiveling point on top of the swivel at the main line, if this, main, if this branch were to get wrapped around the main line on the way up, it gives it another chance to spin freely and not twist the fish off. There was a time, we did an experiment one time with non-swiveled hooks and, and this rig with swiveled hooks, and it was more than double the amount of fish made it to the boat. So it does matter to have that swivel. And of course, these little glow tubes help cover up some of that gear. Fish bites on top of that glow tube work great. Of course, you can use squid, uh, bonita, barracuda. That's, barracuda works for just about everything. That's what I, we used I found that a long time ago. A big slab of barracuda. I think yeah. everybody wants to just get back at the barracuda. <laughs> well, so. this stuff's tough. Yeah, and it, it doesn't come fiber. off. It yeah, that's come a off. big deal. But. Well, thanks a lot, man. Oh, I no appreciate worries. it. It was a pleasure. Good job, gentlemen. Learned a lot. Learned a lot, per usual. All right, well, word has it the Garmin Middle Coast region likes to get low. So let's check in with Captain Bank Grimes to see how we're reeling in America's weekend. Talk to us, Bank. Yep. <laughs> get low. Since June 1st, I mean, we, there's been a lot of deep dropping in the Middle Coast. Uh, offshore captains, we walked about, worked about 100 foot of water with sardines and squid for easy catches of red snapper. Most of those are Carolina rigging with 8 to 12 ounce uh, weights and jigging up and down the bottom. Uh, Guy Michael Be Quebeca said he's using like 10 pound weights to get baits down to swordfish depths where uh, very little light penetrates the water. That's in about 80 to 90 uh, miles uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. That's a real, real deep drop. Uh, as for inshore, about the deepest we drop is uh, at the Port O'Connor Jetty for bull redfish in about 35 to 95 foot of water. Uh, and the Matagorda Jetty, about the deepest we drop is about 12 to 15 feet, but uh, we, we have a good time at it, man. There's always redfish, sharks, kingfish, and everything like that. I tell you, uh, it's finally July, and with that, uh, most of the low tides of the southwest winds, but but uh, there's also, here lately, there's been no wind, blistering uh, blistering heat, and then uh, the surf-ready sunrises have been really, really good. Uh, East Matagorda Bay has been good for drifting. It's much, much time for uh, bite with uh, soft plastics, but we've been tossing live shrimp under a mid-coast cork and catching plenty. Waders have worked the mud flats on the east end and found uh, fish on she-dogs. Reefs in the middle of the bay like Long Reef, Three Beacon, Half Moon, and Barefoot have 
have produced for uh, waders on she dogs and uh, bass assassins. West Matagorda Gorda Bay has been good for waders working sand and grass on the south shoreline around Pascavallo. Half Moon Reef's been hot with live winds and uh, and best there on live shrimp under popping cork. And Port O'Connor guy Lynn Smith said those deep reefs in the middle of the bay have been good on live bait while uh, fishing out of the boat. Waders around Pascavallo have caught it, uh, early limits of of fish on top waters and swim baits like the uh, bass assassin sea shad and they're working that sand and grass and then in rockport the sand and grass pattern and aransas bay has been good on live bait and also on bass assassin and mirror little johns uh waiters work mud island with small top waters it's all plastic that photo there that's a nice five pounder uh it doesn't look that big because the guy holding it's a six four uh ex-military guy and he and he's uh He's got Viking uh, ancestry in him, so uh, he's a pretty big dude. So it makes that five, six pound trout look pretty big, pretty small. Uh, we'll go redfish. I tell you, the points and bows around Oyster Lake, Crab Lake, Mad Island, have held good reds. Uh, Boggy Lake, just off the ICW near uh, East Matagorda Bay, has been good. Uh, and so is Lake Austin and the muddy shorelines of Brown Seeker Flats. We've had low tides for most of the month, but we've got a little low pressure cropping up in the Gulf right now, and it's blowing up our tides. So those those backwater uh, patterns will be really, really good. Reefs in uh, Bass Drop Bay and Chocolate Bow are good for reds on live shrimp and finger mullet. San Luis Pass is holding bull redfish on crabs and shrimp. And the Free, free uh, Port and Surfside Jetties are holding reds on pogies and table shrimp. Best action for reds in Port O is the back lakes. Uh, the jetty, like it's every week, uh, holding both slot and bull reds. Work the channel side on the outgoing tide and then the beach side on the incoming. Look for surface action later in the morning as the sun gets higher. Uh, like I said, a lot of uh, we're getting a lot more water in because uh, uh, of that low pressure in the Gulf and uh, it's kind of pulling up our tides. Offshore kingfish, uh, Matagorda guide Michael Quebec said kingfish. He, he's everywhere around structure. Gulf, uh, the Gulf shrimp season opens July the 15th. It's about you know two weeks. And many of those kings will be behind those shrimp boats while they're culling. Red snapper are everywhere out there from Freeport to Port O'Connor. The last 10 days have been calm, so a lot of people have been able to get out there. Uh, drop a squid down 90 to 120 foot of water, and you'll probably get bit. Uh, best bites for cobia lately have come around wrecks and weed lines, and there's lots of dorado and chicken dolphin on the weed line. Uh, i tell you, that's, that's just a good, another good report on the Garmin Middle Coast region. We want you to enjoy uh, your 4th of July weekend keep uh, practicing sound conservation and uh of our bays and bayous and estuaries and you know be patient this weekend because there'll be a lot of people on the water that's good advice thank you so much for all that offshore info bink we're going to go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hot spots from the middle coast region <clears throat> bink says that the trout are good at the jetty on live shrimp under a mid coast popping cork redfish are best along the shorelines on live shrimp and on Berkeley Jaywalkers while waiting, Bree. All right, we're busting out the red, white, and blue with a side of bass in the upper and lower fresh regions next. So stay tight and we'll be right back. What do you think, Rick? Where's your red, white, and blue? I got a... Black, white, and gray is oh, not the man. color for this weekend. I know, bad on Ricky. We'll be back. The Texas <laughs> Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Island Lures, Tournament Tackle, Rodan, Set It, Forget It, Catch More Fish, Sirius XM Marine, Weather, Fish Mapping, Entertainment, Shallow Sport, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com, and Penn, let the battle begin. Thanks for calling SiriusXM. SiriusXM Marine Weather is a tool we rely on almost every day, especially during the summer when storms are more frequent. One of my favorite features is being able to see where recent lightning strikes have occurred. This is extremely useful because being able to differentiate between storms with lightning and those without is something that traditional radar can't accomplish. Knowing that we're clear of lightning is a real lifesaver when you're offshore and out of cell range. We were fishing the Cape Lookout Shootout Championship in November. We ran from Moorhead City to Cape Hatteras. We were looking for 68 to 72 degree water. So we used our Sirius 
XM marine weather to locate the water over the structure. Once we were able to do that, we caught about 30 fish that day and we had a blast. During the first day of a recent tournament, we had a game plan to go offshore to an area that we wanted to fish. As we were leaving port, we monitored our Sirius XM marine weather and found that bad weather was heading that direction. Based on the track and the severity of the storm, we decided to fish our plan B area until the storm cleared. Well, the bite was so good at our plan B spot that we caught our tournament winning fish within an hour. Every morning before leaving the dock, I pull up our Sirius XM marine weather to check for storms and then switch over to fish mapping to help identify where we're going to fish. Using tools like plankton concentration, sea surface temperature contours, and fishing recommendations make it easy to identify hot spots. Fish mapping is an invaluable tool that helps keep us in the meat all year. You know, Bree, I've seen a lot of cool things in my 40 years of being in this business. Mm -hmm. But I never remember early on having such great technology at our fingertips, no. and that's what the Sirius XM Marine and the fish mapping, whether yeah. it's radar in a little boat like this, or whether it's your fish mapping offshore telling you where the temperature breaks are or weed lines. Help you catch fish and possibly save your life. Yes, so. absolutely. All right, well, there's no better life than lake life when it comes to the 4th of July weekend. So let's see what we're catching in the upper fresh region on Fork, Texoma, Athens, Tawakonee, and Levon with Mike McFarland. Go for it, Mike. Hey, Bree. Hey, let's talk about our theme this week, deep dropping. Um, you know, normally in the freshwater stuff, you got to have pretty deep water to deep drop. And, and most of these upper fresh lakes are real shallow. So here in the upper region, we just don't do a lot of deep dropping, at least what we would consider deep dropping. Um, fishing deep water here is 18 to 28 feet of water. It doesn't leave a lot of room. There is some vertical dropping stuff that we tend to do. Um, sometimes the bass will get, bass and stripers will get schooled up in enough, deep enough water that we can vertical drop slab spoons or flutter spoons and maybe even a drop dot rig from time to time. But generally, they're shallow enough that if you get the boat on top of them, you tend to spook those species. Um, but the crappie fishermen, however, crappie fishing in Lake Fork and really a lot of the region, upper regions, they, they do a lot of vertical dropping, hand-tied marabou jigs, hair jigs, tip with minnows, um, and different ways like that. They absolutely do catch the crappie in the upper region, especially here when they're suspended in the summer months. Um, but that's kind of the deep drop. Let's move to largemouth bass on Fork. Fork is just being Lake Fork. It's a world-class fishery. It's about six feet, one inch below full pool, 86 to 89 degree water temps, one to two foot visibility. Um, the low lake conditions, it's getting dangerous, more and more dangerous. As a matter of fact, I thumped a stump myself last week in the buoy lanes. Um, we really need some rain. Um, we really, really do, um, but I don't expect to get any of that. So I can't emphasize enough that if you come to Fork, don't be afraid of it. Just don't travel at high speeds. Um, take your time and you run the buoy lanes only. Don't stray out of those buoy lanes. Um, it can really cause huge damage to your boat and engine. Uh, the bass fishing is excellent. It's a little sporadic on a daily basis. Um, it's really all about winds. We don't have winds, it's a grind. I mean, we get some winds, the fish are biting. Um, they're really good on road beds, long points, shell beds, offshore structures basically at 10 to 24 feet. Uh, the big worm is really the best bite that I've had, but I'm also catching them on football jigs. Um, and your guest colors are plum, plum apple, blue fleck, and as of yesterday, I really started catching them on red shad. So red shad, power worms, and, and big 10-inch worms, things like that, are working good. The best color for the jigs is green pumpkin with something orange in it, and definitely has a twin tail trailer on it. Um, remember that you can't go too slow. Uh, if you're fishing too fast, it's probably why you're not catching fish. I tell my clients a lot of times, slow down, marinate that like a piece of chicken. And or I, or I interrupt them and then I get talking about something and I, I distract them and, and they tend to catch more fish the more they let that bait soak. So, um, 4th of July is coming. Be really careful here. It's going to be very traffic-y. Um, but honestly, July is going to be awesome on Fork. And I really, really expect the Fork to be in the limelight hotspot of our report very soon. So, here's a couple of great Lake Fork specials that we just caught last week. Nice. Wow. All right, man. Looking good. All right, what else you got for Tawakini. us? Tawakini bass. Man, Tawakini is on fire. Everything, all the species there are, are the, everything's rolling. Largemouth bass there will be caught all day long on frogs and buzzbaits around any vegetation you can find. Lily pads are best. 
Um, and if you're not catching them there, go to the crankbaits and creature baits around rocks and docks. And they're catching a lot of four to five pound bass there. So stay with that. Lake Athens with guide Jay Bonner. 86 degree lows, 90 degree highs. The docks are good. They're the same with sinkos, flukes, and underspins. Fish the outside grass lines and humps with Texas rigs, shaky heads, and sea rigs. It's trying to develop a thermocline in about 25 feet of water. Once it does, you get some really cool offshore fishing out there on Lake Athens for the bass. Let's keep going. Levon. Levon is also fishing pretty good for bass right now. White chartreuse spinnerbaits in the early morning, then switch to crankbaits. Use shad colors and 12-foot deep divers. Um, also, some spoons, jigs, and worms are working as well um, on 5 to 25 feet, catching a few on the points. How about crappie? Let's talk crappie. Everybody loves them crappie. Nobody better than Terry Moon on Lake Fork. The crappie is suspending at 8 to 18 feet in a 12 to 25 feet of water. Um, the edge of the timber, creek channels, brush piles, and bridges um, really is your best places to be. A slow motion presentation has been really working best with skipper jigs and limit tackle, one eighth ounce and one quarter ounce. Um, white, chartreuse, and blue, and just plain chartreuse. Terry says, don't let the heat stop you. They're still catching a lot of fish. Just you got to quit a little bit earlier. And here's another, once again, another great catch with Miss Terry Moon. You got 30 seconds for if you want to cover stripers and white bass, Mike. Let's do that on Tawakini. Fishing is still on fire there. The sand bass and hybrids are schooling at daybreak around shallow flat slabs and swim baits are really your best bait. Live bait is also working for the big stripers suspended in 30 to 4 feet, 30 to 40 over the humps and ridges, and the bite is good all day long. All right, man. Thank you so much. We'll catch up with you next week. Good report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the upper fresh hotspots from Mike's region. He says that Lake Tawakini is still the best place to go fishing, whether you're fishing for largemouth bass, catfish, hybrids, or stripers. This lake is simply on fire. The bass are shall on shallow frogs and creature baits early. Stripers are suspended and being caught out deep on live baits and slab spoons. And then the catfish are spawning around the shallow rocks and that vegetation. Just marinating the chicken. <laughs> I like it, <laughs> Love man. It. I'm going to use that, boy. Yeah, you I'm are. Tell you. I know. <laughs> All right, the Lower Fresh region has definitely been doing their share of deep dropping techniques, so let's get with Matt Reed on some details. Go for it, Matt. All right, let's get this thing started. Uh, you know, this is definitely the time of year to concentrate, concentrate on the deep drop-offs out of the main lake. Uh, as the temperature rises, the fish are going to seek that comfort out there in that deeper water. Uh, the depth that those fish will use varies greatly from lake to lake. Uh, the biggest factor to determine how deep they go is whether you have the presence of a thermocline or not. Uh, the oxygen will be deleted, depleted below that thermocline, uh, so the fish are usually concentrated just a few feet shallower than that. Uh, and how you know about a thermocline on your electronics, it will show up as a gray line visible in the middle of the water column. Um, and you'll notice all the bait fish and stuff will, will be concentrated right above that. So you want to find structure, you want to find the drop-offs that match the thermocline. You want them to, to where the top of that drop is a couple of feet above where the thermocline is, and that's where your fish are going to are going to concentrate. Uh, most South Texas lakes, that'll happen in 15 to 25 feet of water. Uh, some lakes that run water all the time, they won't have a thermocline show up at all. Uh, the best techniques to optimize your results in that deeper water are Carolina rigs, football jigs, deep crankbaits. Uh, you know, those are bass's favorites for out in that deeper water. And this is just what I love to do because when you find them, they tend to be in large schools and you can sit there and catch a bunch of them. Let's move on and just talk about the bass. Give me a, a, a bass report. Uh, Mike Bates sent me a report from Choke Canyon. Uh, bass fishing has gotten back to normal after all the extra tournament traffic that's been there the last couple of weeks. Uh, boat traffic's actually pretty light due to the heat. Uh, you name it, it's working right now. Fish is really good. Top water spinnerbaits, chatterbaits, swim baits, Texas rigs, Carolina rigs, and crankbaits have just all been successful. So you can choose what you choose your poison, get out and concentrate on it, and, and you can catch them, you know, doing what you like to do. Uh, top water is even going on up until noon sometime if you got a little clouds. Uh, but the best advice is pick what you like to do and stay with it. Our numbers have been really good for this time of year. Uh, on his trips last week, he said he had nine fish that were between seven and eight pounds in just a few days. 
Nice. Uh, Brian Cotter sent me reports from the, the Austin area, like Travis is fishing well. Uh, your main target there is schooling fish. They're going strong in the deeper marinas and coves. You want to throw clear or shad colored top waters. Uh, walking or proper style work great. Our small swim baits on, on a light jig head, just reel it slowly through those surface and fish, and that'll get you bit. Later, you want to work the deep ledges and cliffs with a Texas rig or a drop shot. Lake Buchanan is fishing good around the rock piles and 6 to 15 foot. Uh, Texas rigs and crankbaits have been your best option there. I like Decker. Also, the bass have been really cooperative. You're going to work the edges of the grass with a Texas rig. You can also throw a hollow body frog up on the top of that mat to catch fish through it. Uh, look, also, you want to look for brush piles off the edge of that grass at 10 to 15 feet of water. When you see a pile out there, get you a Texas rig or a crankbait and throw it through it. Uh, lots of big ones have been coming that way. Uh, when those deeper piles, is, you know, when you get bit out there, hang on. It might be the one you're looking for. Uh, my baby down at Falcon, uh, the fish are behaving well. Uh, they're using the main leg drop-offs and, and brush piles in that 12 to 18 feet of water. Uh, on the rock, I prefer to throw crankbaits and, and stand-up heads, you know, with a plum apple plastic worm on it. Uh, in the brush piles, you can't beat the old faithful 10-inch Texas rig worm. Always be ready when you get bit at Falcon because it can be a giant, any cash. You don't ever want to get caught off guard. Right. A couple of bass pictures here. Uh, Mike Bates, one of his customers, has a real pretty fish from Choke Canyon. Uh, that second picture is Jonathan with uh, a Falcon fish from a trip with, with me not too long ago. And that's right. what I've got. Well, that's nice, a good dude. report. You know, Matt, I'm coming there to work on the deer camp in September, and then I'll be there all of October, November, December. But I want to come go fishing with you a couple days. What what month should I book? You know, there's not a bad one. Uh, September, October, either one. Heck, November. There's not a bad month to come to Falcon. Uh, you can catch a big one any month. You know, all the way through the summer, fall. Uh, late in the winter, sometimes it gets you got the potential of a cold front that might mess it up, but, but they really bite all year long down there. All right. Well, I'll be calling you after the show, and we'll get a couple days booked in there. All right, bud. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Fiber Tech hotspots from the Lower Fresh Region. He says Choke Canyon bass fishing, it's really good. There's a great topwater bite around the shallow grass early in the day, and then late later you want to move on the outside edges of the hydrilla and cast Texas rigged worms. And as the day progresses, there are two options: either punch the matted hydrilla or throw crankbaits on a Carol or a Carolina rig on a drops in 15 to 25 feet of water. Look how those fish are moving deep as it gets hot, Bree. I see that, Rick, and you know what? You can catch a big one on Falcon at any time unless you're Rick Murphy. Because <laughs> remember, you tried oh, that once. That's so mean. <laughs> and I, every week I just have to watch him shake his head. See, birthdays just make models just mean. Models, just makes them I'm mean. I'm not no model. All right, if we're ready to model. reel in the fish bites up for coast you're region. You're the model mama. Coming right up, but first, Dave <laughs> is doing stuff over here. Dave, Dave, what are you doing? I'm doing stuff. I'm doing stuff. This looks like something my mom would beat me with when I was a kid. I'm about to beat Rick with. <laughs> here you go, Rebri. Here we'll you go. Back. <laughs> The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Fenwick, feel everything. Diamond fishing products, our reputation is on the line. R&R Tackle, from our tackle box to yours. And Startron, start, run, and store with Startron. All right, guys, today's power pole tip is what I call the spring back. You know, in bass fishing, a lot of times I'm looking for bass on beds, I'm looking for the water, grass beds, structure, and as I'm cruising around and I see something real close to the boat, the worst thing you can do is reverse the trolling motor. I'll use the power poles to spring me back. Check it out. Like right now, there's a nice little patch of grass with a bed on it. Power poles are going down, power poles are down. I'm letting the boat load, letting it load up now. I spring it back, power poles up. Let the boat get the weight of the boat 
and bring the power poles up. Now look, I'm, I'm back, I haven't touched the trolling motor one time. Now if that's a fish on a bed right there, which I can see the bed, I didn't spook him, okay? Didn't have to hit the trolling motor. Now I can redeploy the power poles. I'm in the perfect position now to catch that fish. So guys, that is your power pole tip of the week. So we're here at the workbench. It's time for the troll in the edge with Taco Marine. Yes, sir. So where are we going to start? We're going to start with the gill stuff down there. We got the gill expel. Uh, you're going to go with the shorts, of course. The men's excursion shorts. Uh, those are, you know, look good on and off the water. They got really deep, nice deep pockets on them. They've got a really cool uh, way to adjust the, the waistband inside. Mm -hmm. Very discreet for fellas like myself. Uh, <laughs> Self-adjusting weight system there. It's got a zippered fly and just really nice, nice looking shorts. You know, got a little toggle there. You can hang stuff on them they, if you want. They feel really nice. They, they do. They're really, you know, moisture wicking and all that stuff as well. XPL, I mean, a 50, 50 U, uh, UPV. UPV. Well, yeah. All right, yeah. so what about but what the top? it is is the, it's, it's they have that expel fabric which is what this is too it's an expel tech hoodie and that it resists stains and controls odor it's got this expel new system that they use it's a plant-based fabric treatment and it repels uh, water blood you know muck stains you know it's just a, a a new thing that they have these are really nice they have little loopholes for your thumbs. thumbs you can cover up your hands got a hood yep it's got a nice hood comes men's x extra small all the way to 4xl and women's sizes 9 to 12. Uh, comes in like five different colors. I think that's the shadow camo or the pool camo there. Uh, just really nice, really nice stuff. Gil's been making stuff for a long time and they make really nice clothing. They sure have. Next, we have the Bass Assassin Vapor Shad and some new colors. Uh, we got the Watermelon Magic, the Electric Shiner, and the Green Pumpkin. They're all five inch in the, you know, five inch uh, Vapor Shads. They also have the Bang Scent inside of them and yeah. the liquid salt infused. Really nice little profile. Wow, look at that. Yeah, very shiny and. I'm very into translucent looking yeah, baits. Yeah, those look very nice. Uh, anything would eat those things. Yes, sir. It's a jerk bait, obviously. It's got a you know really nice flutter on the drop. I think the, the jerk drop. is on the end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be me. Anyway, go to BassAssassin.com and, and get you some of those new colors in the Vapor Shad. Nice. It's also got a new color in the in the toad there. It's called the Florida Toad, but. Florida Toad. Yeah. All right, what else we got? Next, Dave? we got the launch assist. And this is this is a little gadget that's made to help a guy who's launching by himself. And, you know, it comes, it's got two different pieces here. This you <laughs> attach to your trailer just for a storage. And, you know, you can, it has got comes with uh, zip ties and everything. And it, you can just attach it to the, right underneath the gimbal. I mean, the uh, the crank on your Under trailer. The crank. And, it, and that's where you'll store this thing, which is your launch assist. And this has got two nice stainless steel hooks on each end, nice bungee in the middle to keep it from, you know, snapping uh, back and forth. It's a real soft launch. Uh, it's great if your family's not there to help you. You just attach one end to your trailer and one end to the boat. And it comes in two sizes, the 17 inch, I mean the 17 foot or uh, longer size that? and the 16 foot or longer for the little skiffs and stuff. Yeah, you know, like my so size. It keeps boat. the boat from banging. drifting away. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. it comes and you know stops it from going all the way. So I like it. Go to launchassist.net for that. All right. I Last like but it. not least, we got the Sea Velop uh, sidearm rod holders. Uh, these are tilting rod holders, and these are really they go this way. Really cool. Ah, my fingers in the bottom. Sorry. But anyway, <laughs> you don't have to. What these are made for is you don't have to lift <laughs> your rods uh, if you if you got a T-top. Right. And you got rod mounted, I mean, uh, rod holders mounted on the side of the console. If you use anything other than a six foot rod and you go to try to pull it up out of the holder, it punches holes in your rod tip. So I'm going to come out here a little bit. I don't know. I didn't tell you guys this, but if you've got these things mounted on the side, you mm -hmm. can just come right up with your foot, tap that little pin, pull it out, and then you don't have to punch a hole in the T-top or break off the tip of your rod. They're amazing. They are amazing. You That's know where amazing. I really see a great market for this, Dave, is you no, could attach no, no, this. No, 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 don't say nothing. You might, you might, might, might ruin the guy's idea or something. Oh, right, you're on TV. Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> I can see this as a kingfish. Oh yeah, long rods for sure. Yes, for sure. 
All right. That is a Bree, great C-Vellop. idea. Cvelop.com. Cvelop.com. Go buy them, guys. This is really Could really definitely good stuff. use that. I'm not going to say I haven't done that before. All right. We're taking a look into the abyss and the fish bites upper coast region with Captain Carl Weston. So, Carl, fire us up and get us on our way to the fun weekend ahead. Go for it. All right. We're running out deep again. You know, this is one of my favorite ways to fish out in the deep water. You have no idea what you'll ever catch. Um, first time you think you know, you'll be surprised. I mean, it's always exciting to see what's on the end of the line, especially deep dropping like we did with an R&R. &R. You have four or five hooks on it. Sometimes you'll have three or four different fish. It's just a lot of fun. Um, you know, put the lights on it. We always tip our rig with squid, cut bait, sometimes some live bait, even if we have some small uh, bait fish. Always put a little fish bites. Trust me, you'll want to do this. They, like our golden fowl run in the seven to 1400 foot range in the upper coast. So do hake, yellow edge grouper, and barrel fish. Now our biggest grouper would be our Warsaw, and these guys are finding depths from, say, four to 700 feet. Uh, we also catch scamp and gag in these same areas. Now a quick tip is if I'm in more than 300 foot of water, Rick, I always use light. It's dark down there. With the different species, it always helps. Um, I use bigger baits when I'm grouper fishing. The old uh, adage is true. Um, and uh, if you haven't tried deep dropping, guys, get out there and try it. If it's just a manual crank, it's a good arm workout. It's a lot of fun. We have a picture here today of Chase rigging a deep drop rig with fish bites. So um, let's sneak back inside, back to trout. Uh, the trout bite in Galveston and further east is really improving daily. With the summer heat, everything is heating up, guys. The water temps have the bait moving into the shallows and over the oyster reefs. Over Sabine River is up to 84 degrees. The water is cleaning up beautifully. With this lack of rain we've had lately, Rick, it's starting to look like we're fishing down there with you in Florida. Uh, the live the live bait is steady. Uh, shrimp on a popping cork, as always. Artificial choices have been top water. Um, the twitch baits from Berkeley and Miralore have been hot. Soft plastics have worked as well. Uh, Bass Assassin makes that great three inch shrimp with assortment of colors. Uh, jig heads, the quarter, half inch, all seem to work. As usual, watch for the birds in the morning, guys. You're going to see it. It's hot. Um, you know, Taco Marine offers this new shade fin that fits on almost any boat if you got a rod holder. It's really a game changer out here in this heat. And uh, so we have a picture today with Mason and his dad, Gabe, with his first big fish. Uh, congrats, little guy. Nice. Oh, cool. oh. That's so awesome. Nick and back offshore, guys. Um, we'll close out this month, the first month of red, red snapper season in the Gulf. Uh, it's been a little strange. We've had beautiful weather. Um, sometimes the slide has been, uh, the bite has been very slow. And this goes for both bottom fish and pelagic for the past week. It was kind of a grind, but we had great weather. You can't have it all. But we still got our limits. Um, we've had better luck catching bigger fish on the edges of the structure. So if you get on top, drift off a little bit, drop. Those little fish seem to be just bait robbers. And so if you get off the edge of it a little bit, the bigger fish are hanging. You know, heavy jigs and bucktails, tip the squid fish bites did a little better this week on larger fish. And the deeper waters have been producing better fish this week. Definitely where you want to uh, set up with your garment first, take a look and find these fish. You'll see the bigger marks. Uh, we have a picture today of Mr. Leon with a really nice snapper that could not resist fish bites once again nice uh, tell us so about bumping the out the ling let's talk about those uh big brown torpedoes we have offshore this week there's been a lot more ling action over the underwater structure guys while you're bottom fishing always keep an eye peeled for these boys um, they're smart they're a little shifty they'll come up with you know from the bottom with the snapper and lately they've only been giving us one or two circles around the boat and they've been disappearing so have a pitch rod ready a little chum a live bait hook. I like to keep a, a live bait hook, say a six aught trocar with some fluorocarbons because they get spooky. I also keep a large bucktail rig. r, &R makes a great assortment of those in colors and sizes. And, uh, you know, tip it with squid, anything that gives a little scent, a little color, a little flash, make some noise, bang on the side of the boat. Uh, turn your stereo up. It's, it's all, it all works sometimes. And today, guys, we have a picture of a uh, great group that brought in a really nice blend this past weekend all right carl thank you so much we're going to go ahead and take a look at the r and r tackle hot spots from the upper fresh region carl says chasing trout and throwing a bass assassin three inch shrimp and electric chicken 
on a quarter ounce jig head on the oyster reefs in Galveston Bay is gonna work inshore. And then offshore, focus on the red snapper fishing on the outer edges of the structure with heavier jigs and R&R &R tackle bucktails that are Success. tipped with skid switch bite, uh, fish bites, of course. Oh my goodness. Well, it's, here it's it my, is. It's my 39 year old. Another day. birthday. It's my birthday hat. I'm it's severely disappointed with my girl's y'all's gonna be red, 32. white, and blue. Hey, so I brought some gifts for hey, you guys. Hey, so nice. check check her out, this hat out. Mm, I found this is a lot hat better than ours. In a hardware store, isn't it well, bad? Hardware store is the best. Man, they, got the bad, they got the best stuff. They got cool they knives. Know. They got all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Happy 4th of July to everybody. I will be enjoying my birthday once again this year. We'll see y'all next week. I'm going to blow these candles that. out. Have fun fishing. Birthday <laughs> <This one. Okay. laughs> cookies.